everybody. It's great to see you. We're back again. We're going to be making some great treats for this Easter week. Um, there is a few things that we're going to be doing this week to kind of help you create a, a great Easter for your kids or grandkids or those people that are in your home um, so that you don't have to run to the store to grab anything. Um, all you'll need is just a few essential ingredients at home and you'll be able to make these really well. Now, yesterday um, or on a previous episode, if you're tuning in after we record this, um, I made some homemade raspberry, well, strawberry raspberry vanilla jam. And that jam we're going to be using as part of this um, recipe. We're going to be making some filled cookies. So I'm going to show you how to make the cookie part. And then later on, we're going to come back and I'm going to take that jam that I made yesterday and we're going to put it in these cookies and make some amazing filled cookies. And we're going to actually make these a little bit smaller than normal. You can make them a regular size cookie if you want to, but we're going to be making them a little bit smaller so that you can put them in these little bags that we're going to hide all over the place for the Easter Bunny later this week. So tune into all my episodes this week. Um, you can make these as you go and keep them like in airtight containers. And then what you can do is put them all together and hide them for the kiddos. So that should be really fun. Or even the adults too, because I'm totally game on that one. So we're going to get started. This is my um, Nana Records Famous Filled cook re Cookie Recipe. So those of you out there that um, know my, my Nana Record, she was an amazing cook. Um, like I've said in previous episodes, so this is one of her famous recipes. It's also going to be included in my cookbook later this year when I come up with that. So um, tune in for that one too. That should be great. So we're going to start off with two cups of sugar. And I've already pre-measured that in my, um, in my measuring. And it's going to go right into my stand mixer with the paddle attachment. So two cups of sugar, white granulated sugar, goes right in there. So to this we're going to add one cup of Crisco. So I've pre-measured it here in my bowl. And so one cup of regular vegetable Crisco will go into the mixer. This is just a great recipe. It's, um, it's one of those old fashioned recipes that you just don't see. You just don't see very often. So I'm excited that A, I have this recipe and B, I'm gonna make it for you today. So also with this, mixture of the Crisco and the sugar is going to go two eggs. So I've got two eggs right here and they're at room temperature. They don't necessarily have to be at room temperature if you haven't had a chance to let them set on the counter for an hour or so. But I really like making sure that my eggs are at room temperature when I'm baking. It just helps with the consistency of the mix itself and it also helps so that it doesn't kind of shock anything when you're putting in all of these ingredients. I try to kind of bring them up so that they're not really cold, unless the recipe calls for it, like really cold water in any type of pastry and or pie crust. Cold water is very essential in that. Okay, so two room temperature eggs, if possible, goes into the mix there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine all three of those ingredients there. And these three ingredients, are just going to mix well on kind of like a, a semi-low um, speed, low like the first or second setting. If you have a stand mixer, if you don't have a stand mixer, it's okay. You can use a regular um, hand mixer if you want to and just start low first, okay? Low and slow at the beginning because you don't want to mess everywhere, trust me. And also, you don't want the ingredients spitting up on the sides of your bowl right away because then you're going to have to stop and scrape it down. Okay, so it's pretty important to do that. Now what we're going to do is this sugar is going to have to get really fluffy. So when you first start mixing it, you're going to see like a darker yellow color because of the eggs, right? What you're going to do is you're going to keep mixing this until that becomes a light yellow. So you're going to be able to see all of the ingredients incorporating together and you're going to be able to see that sugar actually spin right into that Crisco and the egg mixture forming a nice creamy mix. So we're going to, that is pretty well incorporated to the beginning stage. So we're going to vamp this up and we're going to just let it beat. Now I would let this beat for at least three minutes right on high, let it go, okay? So I'm going to let this beat, we're going to continue, if it gets too much up on 
on the side, simply stop your mix, scrape it down, and then start again, okay? And so we're gonna just keep letting this mix, and then we're gonna add the other ingredients in just a couple of minutes. All right, everybody, it's been a few minutes, been about four minutes. And I just let it whip a little bit longer because I really want those, um, all of those items to incorporate together to make a nice fluffy mixture. So don't be afraid to just beat this quite a while, um, just until you're comfortable with what it looks like. You want that nice lemony yellow flake, um, color to it. And I'm gonna show you, I think that is pretty good there. Yeah, that looks really good. Now I'm gonna kind of scrape some up so you can see. Now you see how that has a nice buttery type consistency to it? So there's no butter in it, but it kind of looks like butter, right? But it's nice and fluffy and you can kind of see that um, there, it doesn't look as granular as when you first started. So whipping this for, you know, a good three to four minutes is key to the beginning stages of this mix, okay? So you can kind of scrape down the sides a little bit if you want to there and um, just make sure that all of the ingredients are really, really well incorporated. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our dry ingredients, okay? So we are going to have um, five cups of flour. All-purpose flour is fine. And I'm actually gonna sip this. Now, well, I use King Arthur flour, the all-bleached, um, all-purpose white flour. And most of the time you can just fluff it up. But with this, um, with this cookie recipe, uh, my grandmother always sifted flour because back in the day you always sifted flour. And um, this is her sifter too, by the way. So I've um, put in five cups of flour. I've sifted some of it, um, but we're gonna add some other dry ingredients with it and we're gonna sift it all together. Now, if you don't have a flour sifter, that's okay. Um, do me a favor and when you measure out your flour, measure it into a bowl first and just kind of toss it with a fork. That kind of makes it light and airy. It gets the air into the flour and it just it's going to help incorporate and just make those um, those cookies nice and fluffy and tender, okay, soft. So what we're going to do is we're gonna add a few other dry ingredients to this. First off, we're gonna start with the salt. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to just, this is a quarter teaspoon here. So I'm just gonna put three of those in there. And I've got the last two cups of flour. I've sifted three cups into the bowl already. And I've got the last two cups here in my sifter. So that's why I'm just gonna kind of add these few other dry ingredients to it and just kind of sift them all together so it's incorporated really well. And like I said before, even if you have like one of the colanders, like the screen colanders, you can use those as a sifter. Just put all your stuff in there and just kind of tap it. Because that's all this is. It has a wire mesh bottom and you're good to go. So then the next one is baking powder. So on the baking powder, you're going to have two teaspoons of baking powder. So I have my teaspoon here two level teaspoons of the baking powder goes into the sifter. And then the last dry ingredient that I'm going to add is the baking soda. And baking soda, you're gonna add one teaspoon of the baking soda. So two teaspoons of the powder and one teaspoon of the soda, okay? Sometimes baking recipes don't call for both, but in this case it does. So you're gonna need a little rising power on this and a little stability power. So that's why you have powder and soda together. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to just begin to sift this last two cups into our flour mixture. These little sifters are so cute. You can pick these up still in kitchen, in kitchen stores, um, specialty stores, yard sales. <laughs> yard sales are great. Antique stores, whatever. So that is perfect. Okay. So we've got the five cups of flour and we've got the two teaspoons of baking powder, the one teaspoon of baking soda, and then three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. So that's all been sifted and incorporated in here. So then to this, we have um, here one cup of sour cream. So we're going to, um, the sour cream and the flour, we're going to incorporate piece by piece into this mixture. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my mixer on low. It might help if I raise it back up. 
Okay, so we're gonna start that on low. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna add one tablespoon at a time, back and forth with the flour mixture and the sour cream. Now, you can put in a few tablespoons of the, of the flour mixture at a time. I'm just using a little um, baking spatula to kind of spoon this in. You can use like a bigger spatula if you want to. And what this is doing is this is just one by one. It's alternating and adding in as it goes on the slow, on the slow speed, just so that the flour doesn't go everywhere. And also so the ingredients, you don't have to keep scraping down the bowl. Cause that's just a pain sometimes. And if you do this slowly, 